Hitting a new low, President Trump's approval rating dropping to 36 percent, according to Gallup. But don't write off the president just yet. Some former presidents have suffered from even lower approval numbers and saw these numbers bounce back. Here now is Doug Weed, presidential historian and former special assistant to G George H.W. Bush. I always make the mistake of that. Good to see you, sir. Thanks for coming in. Uh, we should mention that by the time Ronald Reagan, there's your book, Game of Thorns, by the time Ronald Reagan left office, his approval rating went way up to 63 percent. So there's no telling what happens now compared to what will happen at the end of his term. That's absolutely right. The, the mainstream media should not be popping the champagne just yet. It's, uh, we've had eight presidents, David, in recent times, in modern times, who had lower approval ratings than Donald Trump has right now. And in the first hundred days, you'll remember John F. Kennedy experienced the Bay of Pigs. Of it was a disaster. But uh, he gave that great speech a year later at Rice. Uh, we choose to go to the moon, not right. because it's uh, easy, but because it's hard. And he's one of our most beloved presidents. Absolutely. And Reagan was shot in his first hundred yeah. days. Only thing he signed was some uh, support bill about dairy uh, price supports. But uh, he uh, is ranked by history as one of our greatest presidents. They say Lincoln saved the Union, but Reagan saved humanity. And you know so. what, what unites both JFK, John Kennedy, and Ronald Reagan is that their, their numbers turned around, their popular, popularity numbers turned around when they got the tax cuts in. We had these great JFK tax cuts, tax rates came down, the economy boomed, the same thing happened with Reagan. Maybe there's a lesson there for Trump. That's a great point. And, you know, in Game of Thorns, I, I, analyzing Trump's style, he, he tried to build that uh, neighborhood in Riverside. He got resistance, strong resistance. He said, okay, went off and built something near Wall Street, built Trump Tower, built the, the tallest residential uh, yeah. building in the world uh, at near the UN. But he came back to Riverside. And today, the people that live there and they look out at the lazy sailboats in the bay, they don't even know that's a Donald Trump neighborhood. That's how I see him coming back to health care. He, 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 he'll leave it, but he'll come back well, when we'll the time's see. right. We'll see. Finally, the media. The media has just been relentless in trying to tear down Trump so far. Look at these headlines. The Trump presidency is already a joke. The soul-sucking, attention-eating black hole of the Trump presidency. Has any president ever received headlines like this? <laughs> well, they have, but not this early. I'm reminded of Lee Corso's great line, not so fast, my friend. I mean, <laughs> Trump's got a lot left in him, okay. and it's exciting. And the best way to tell is that stock market. That's where people put their That's money, true. and they're putting their money on Donald Trump that he's going to figure all this out. Doug Weed, great to have you here again. Thank you very much for coming Thank back. You, I appreciate it. Melissa. President Trump calling out his former campaign rival why the president thinks the House Intel Committee should be investigating Hillary Clinton's ties to Russia. Next, Ambassador John Bolton sounds off. Some 